Florida Congressman Ted Deutsch is pushing for legislation that would give the White House more authority to sanction nations and groups who hold Americans hostages. The bill is called the Robert Levinson Hostage Recovery and the Hostage Taking Accountability Act. It is named for former FBI agent Bob Levinson, who was working for the CIA when he was taken captive in Iran. That was back in 2007. And in an exclusive interview with Hill TV's John Solomon, Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska discusses his role in those efforts to secure Levinson's release. You recently won a case to secure the release of documents from the State Department to show what evidence, if any, the State Department has had to keep you out of uh, arriving or visiting the United States and getting a normal visa. Can you tell me what you and your lawyers discovered when you got those documents? We just only suspected the same documents because uh, technically they released documents which uh, brought uh, them to my designation as a DM um, in sanction uh, a year ago, April 6th. But since it was uh, kind of rubbish articles which you even put on Google if you go online, you know, I suspect that it was the uh, same type of material which they used for the last, I assume, 20 years uh, to, you know, to fight with me. The, um, it does it surprise you that the United States government would make a decision on sanctions or make a decision on a visa uh, based on basically public interest articles and nothing else? Difficult to say. Um, in general, of course, but uh, since I learned from my history of a connection uh, with various officials representing uh, U.S. government, it was always, uh, how to say, strange that uh, you don't expect uh, any detailed information they would have in their hands when they talk to you. It's funny, uh, about a year ago, sir, I had the opportunity to interview some FBI agents that interacted with you over the last decade. And at one point they said they went to look at the State Department's files and they called it in their own words, a very thinly veiled pretext. I think you've heard something similar in your interactions. Tell me, when you, when you talk to the FBI agents and they, they describe to you why the State Department was keeping uh, you out of the country, what did they tell you in, in person about the, the, the nature of that evidence? But there is no evidence to understand the logic that uh, most of the most of the articles been inspired by so-called people, mostly you know Russian origin, with whom I was in dis dispute, you know, over you know the right. years, right. and um, and people from the bureau, they usually very professional. Of course, I've seen in a different one, but uh, they just, uh, you know, keep their shoulders up and say what we can do. It's a different department. But uh, in reality, if you see on, on, on my case and the way it's, uh, it was a you know, significant impact, not just on, on me, on my group or, you know, economy in Russia, but also, you know, you need to understand that 400,000 people was immediately affected through this day. And uh, to make this based on few articles, which, as I said, you even couldn't Google, it's too much. And uh, I, when I consider this, you know, slightly late, I understand it was a kind of punishment without uh, any guilt, but it was punishment for reason, just to create an example to scare others. And uh, if you would think same as me, it's a little bit, uh, how to say, uh, middle, you know, medieval, you know, or even more, if you go back to Roman time when they made decimation or kind of punishment just to produce scary effect on others, you know, it's uh, it's not what you would expect from uh, U.S. Uh, bureaucracy or U.S. legal system, and that's why I decided, you know, to to fight back, and my lawyers, you know must support my view. Now, uh, your company has been able to get some relief from the sanctions. What is the status of your ability to maybe get yourself uh, removed from the sanctions list? I can't see any chance except I go, you know, through the court process. It's obvious right. for me. 
And uh, do you think you're developing a body of evidence that would uh, dispute the U.S. assessment of your of your case? Oh, John, you said there is no evidence. What yeah. what to dispute? Yeah. You really believe that I could kill someone 25 years ago, and there would be no victims, no corpse, no names, and you know, all this boulder dash which you, you know, may read in nineties because right. people out of internet. There was no regular, how to say, contact with the media. But but now, you know, 25 years later, how you would even consider that it's maybe reality? Yeah, that, and those, are, those. Why wouldn't ask you know anyone if you know I saw lots of your articles on on Kiev story you know and you 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 take your time you went on field on the ground tried to ask different people why no one tried to go Siberia you know Nizhny Novgorod South Moscow and ask people with whom I work you know, I work with a few hundred thousand people through this time almost directly you know restructuring the plants, creating companies which become competitive and uh, you know, not as small players, not just in Russian economy and the global economy. And you would really believe, you know, this these people wouldn't witness anything wrong or they would work with uh, um, such a figure like it was presented by, you know, bureaucrats from a state or treasury. Just complete nonsense. So let me ask you the questions that most American media have never had a chance to ask you. Have you ever ordered anyone to be killed or did you kill anyone during this period over the last 25 years? You're joking. Uh, no, I, I, well, we should ask the American public. <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're, our government makes those allegations, right? But you've never had that chance to really address them. What, what, is, what is your response to people who say that to you? Not just just not a nonsense you need to give me who was this victim right. just give the name any name how it's possible that 25 years you know you you're supposed to know you know how it's happened when it's happened with whom it's happened what was the name of the person who was under attack or somehow suffered let's find him let's ask him or let's ask a witness of whatever it's claimed to happen in the um in the discussions with the FBI agents who worked with you uh, in, in, back in some time, they said that some of the information they learned on their own was that uh, early on there were protests or attacks on your plants by people trying to stop the success of your business and that gunfire and security agencies tried to help save people. Is that a possible explanation for some of these reports that you've, you've disputed over the years? Mm, no. It no, it's it's actually never happens this way. It's yeah. a kind of romantic story for Hollywood. Yeah. You no, know? and but it's no. It was uh, very wild because it was a time when uh, the Russian state almost ceased to exist. If we fast forward a little bit of time, I've spent a lot of time researching the period of 2009 to 2011 when you and others tried to help our FBI here search for the missing retired agent Bob Levinson. I wonder if you could describe in your own words, what did you do, how much did it cost you, and how close did you come to securing Mr. Levinson's release? Um, it's, uh, how to say, it's quite a delicate issue. You understand, I'm in private business, and uh, yes. when friends of uh, Levinson family approached me, I told them that um, I'm not sure how I can do it. and. Uh, I told them that I would, I would, I can, you know, go and, you know, and ask, you know, Russian state support because I don't think they would understand why Russian authority will not come and ask them. I actually don't understand why it wouldn't happen, but uh, uh, it was quite expensive, uh, around twenty some million, and uh, guy who. You know, helps build to build a team, and who you know starts this uh, project. You know, I think he come very close, but then for some reason, you know, everything was stopped. And uh, later, and I'm still investigated because I think it's uh, it was one of the issue which come to my designation list. Um, but later, I heard that. Uh, same Russian hands or whatever you call it, people who expert on Russian State Department. We just don't want to owe anything to this guy. But 
it was not our deal. Right, you know, there was right. uh, they just approached me to help, you know, for help. You understand? There was no written deal. I didn't ask for anything. Like uh, later, there was uh, stories, you know, about my offer to testify in Congress. No right. immunity. Nothing. I, the, I really was, and by the way, on a sidetrack, I was approached, uh, and I know that he has under a lot of scrutiny, McCabe, and he also said that it's a, very important enough for all of them, and I kind of trust him. Right. So the FBI was among those who approached you, and um, describe how... Uh, the deal fell apart. You mentioned a little bit about resistance from the State Department. Some of the FBI agents I talked to said that the State Department refused to take a certain action. Do you remember what might have scuttled the deal to get Mr. Levinson back? Um, John, if you don't mind, I'm not prepared to talk too much publicly on it. And first, as I, I said, so, yeah. how to say it? Let's consider it you know, it was my private undertaking. And uh, now I actually try to investigate more who and how was connected. I'm not prepared at this moment. Understand. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, let me ask you just one thing on behalf of the Levinson family, who I've talked to several times. Did you have a high degree of confidence in 011, at least that he was alive still and that he might still be alive today? Um, I don't think so. No. But he, what, what, is he likely alive still in 2011 when you were working on it? Mm, I saw the picture. You saw the picture. Right. Right. I don't okay. think they've been genuine, accurate. Yeah. Okay. But again, I was, well, I was surprised why, why even if they don't want to force for any reason, and I try to understand now better since they of the you know state department of this all, all of these people no, but why no one since they have uh, you know solid proof you know why no one when when there was a deal why no one asked you know about him why no one demand to you know to to make him part of the deal i mean it's for me it's obvious and why it didn't happen just give me more reason you not know, to investigate deeply what's actually happened on on your side when you say it was obvious why it didn't happen what's your assessment was it that the cia had sent them in and they didn't want to acknowledge it i'm not prepared to talk at this moment i'm okay i'm sorry i understand the documents indicate both in the time you helped the fbi privately uh, in the search for levinson and in the period where they tried to talk to you uh, in 2015 through Christopher Steele and, and Bruce Orr, that at various times the United States government let you into the country, either the CIA or the FBI let you in without objection. What does that say about the nature of the concerns they had about you if they would let you in on, on episodic occasions? But, John, as I said, they have no concern. We have right. nothing to discuss. I was prepared since end of 90s, you know, to answer any question. Right. And there a few times I, I answered, you know, and, uh, and for me, you know, case was clear. But then, again, I don't, I don't want to explain you how your State Department worked through all these years, <laughs> and uh, how this Russian hands or now Eurasian hands actually create. And if right. you look at reality, is it now safer than it was in the beginning of the 90s for both of us, you know, for years, for Russia, for U.S. people, for Russian people? No, I mean, we in a kind of deadlock, which, uh, un, you know, was unsinkable in time when uh, Russia and Perestroika and start new, you know, life, you know, market economy and attempt to, to build, uh, you know, successful country. What is your best advice? How can Russia and the United States get on a better footing, given all that's happened the last four to six years? I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, you you have your own political cycle. No one will deal with it next two years. It's obvious. Then whatever happened, we either have reincarnation of Russian hands or we will see something different. I don't know, but uh, I I think only bad in a big uh, economic crisis will will change. Uh, you know, rule of the games and uh, 
it's coming and we all know that uh, in 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 this type of crisis you know then you know people start seeing differently but at this moment i just can't see what what could change uh, the course in John's next interview with Deripaska, who is the founder of one of Russia's largest industrial groups with interests in aluminum and energy, they discuss climate change. His take might actually surprise you. Hmm. But coming up on Rising, policymakers and pundits continue to debate the merits of Sunday's Korea DMZ meeting and what the next steps might be. Our next guest has real experience negotiating in that region. Former special envoy for six-party talks with North Korea, Ambassador Joseph Detrani. He's going to share his perspective when Rising continues.